I'd like to take this opportunity this afternoon to extend a warm and sincere welcome to all my Aboriginal brothers and sisters who may have travelled here, non-Aboriginal brothers and sisters. Welcome. Welcome to Gadigal Land. Thank you all very much for coming to this very special occasion this evening. Chief Justice, Attorney General, the Honourable Michael Kirby, Chairman Emeritus of the Australian Law Reform Commission, Your Honours, ALRC Commissioners past and present, ALRC staff past and present, and most especially, friends. And it's wonderful that the original Commissioners are with us this evening to share this very fine event. Sir Gerard Brennan, Gareth Evans, John Kane, and of course, Michael Kirby. This is an auspicious anniversary. For tonight, we acknowledge the Commission and the law reform work which it has performed in the service of the Australian people over some 40 years. And while tonight is an evening to take stock on what the last four decades has given us, we should also take the opportunity to look to the future and the continued work of the Australian Law Reform Commission. The Commission is often referred very challenging areas of potential law reform, and its reports have always maintained the very highest standards of scholarship. But it's also contributed to government thinking on a wide range of policy issues at the cutting edge of social change. On behalf of the Australian Government, and on my own behalf, might I thank the many former Commissioners here assembled for all that you have done by your contribution to the Commission to improve the lives of Australians and to build the reputation of the Australian Law Reform Commission. I join with everybody here in congratulating the Commission on the immense body of work which it has done in that time and the positive effects of that work on the making of Australia's laws. We live in an age in which changing social and economic conditions and the astonishing rapidity with which new technologies displace those only a little less new require government action, particularly in the legislative field, which is timely, responsive and adapted to meet those changes. The Australian Law Reform Commission in our time is an institution which has a record of achievement, corporate memory and the methodological tools to assist government and wider Australian society in ensuring that our laws keep up with and ahead of the wave fronts of change. In a submission to the Senate Legal and Constitutional Affairs Committee in 2010, the Federal Court acknowledged the great benefit it derived from the Commission's reports, research and analysis of complex areas of law within federal jurisdiction. It said that more often than not, an ALRC report contains the best statement or source of the current law on a complex and contentious topic that can remain the case for decades thereafter, whether or not the ALRC's recommendations are subsequently implemented. In this way, the ALRC's reports have assisted the Court in the task of ascertaining the law, interpreting statute and developing the common law. And I respectfully endorse those remarks. I'm very proud to be here on the 40th anniversary of the ALRC and I'm not donating this large photograph, I'm taking it back to my chambers where it has been with me every day for the last 40 years. So this was a most remarkable team, and I feel very proud to have worked with them. We embraced the principle of transparency. We had public hearings. We asked the people to say something about our inquiries. We engaged the media, and this was very unusual at the time and I think it was a great strength of the Commission. Apart from anything else, it raised the expectation that something would come of it all. And that expectation became a strong force for action on the reports. Having the opportunity in life to serve in a body of the Commonwealth, appointed by the government of the Commonwealth, serving the parliament of the Commonwealth and the people of the Commonwealth, is an enormous privilege. 
and those of us who have had that privilege are grateful for us for it, but we know others must continue the effort. And to them we say, good wishes, good luck, keep speaking the truth as you see it, speaking of justice for all people in Australia under the law. To celebrate this occasion, the ALRC uh, instituted a, uh, an essay prize, uh, which they were good enough to name uh, after me. Now, Justin Penn, stand and uh, stand in your place as you are acknowledged. <laughs> it's not quite an honorary degree I'm conferring on you, but uh, it is uh, an honour that you have earned. In my role as president, um, I obviously stand on the shoulders of giants, from Michael Kirby to most recently David Weisbrot. How, how can you capture the achievements of 40 years? And then it came to me, mille fleurs. It was an idea born of medieval tapestries with the wonderful intricate patterns of flowers and animals dotted throughout the design. I imagine law reform as like those wonderful tapestries. There are so many contributions of so many people, each a flower or an animal, embraced in that wonderful design, integral to its overall power and beauty. So today we reveal to the world our virtual timeline in honour of our 40th to capture some of the mille fleurs of our history. Its beauty is that it's an ongoing, eminently expandable thing, and it's a wonderful place where we can put the virtual archive, all of those things that may stay in drawers, yellowing, fading as the case may be, but they now have a home. Photographs, documents, cartoons, and short films the ALRC's historical archive has been brought to life, made accessible to people across Australia and the world through the use of digital online technology. Now to some highlights. There are so many highlights over the four decades, I thought I'd just mention a couple. First, there are the reports. The inquiry into the recognition of Aboriginal customary laws, completed in 1986, was led by James Crawford, and it's not surprising that that inquiry has been mentioned already this evening. It was a mammoth nine-year inquiry and the ALRC's 31st report, and it does indeed remain one of the most visited reports on our website. Significantly, the reflections in that report were ones we returned to in the Native Title Inquiry. The report, Connection to Country Review of the Native Title Act, was launched on 29th of June this year. By 2004, the ALRC had completed three large inquiries dealing with issues at the forefront of science. Human tissue transplants in 1977, essentially yours, the protection of human genetic information in 2003, and genes and ingenuity, gene patenting and human health in 2004, which coincided with the completion of the sequencing of the human genome. Family violence issues now are being recognised as a national emergency and responding to it is a subject on which the ALRC has made significant contributions, most recently in our 2010 and 2011 reports. Privacy has been a recurring topic for the ALRC with five reports in four decades, three during Michael Kirby's chairmanship and then the 2008 report led by Les McCrimmon, which remains one of the most accessed ALRC reports. And last year, the report on serious invasions of privacy in the digital era, led by Barbara MacDonald, tackled issues such as drones, surveillance devices, and that sadly increasing phenomenon, revenge porn. What then is the essence of law reform achievements? It's clearly much more than the fact of the 86 reports. 
In 2008, Michael Kirby expressed the idea of impact as the flame of ideas kept alight by permanent law reform bodies, and that the flame of law reform affirms a central concept of the rule of law itself, legal renewal. To fan the flame of ideas in the new millennium, we have embraced digital tools to keep us at the cutting edge of community engagement, and we have often led the way. We now have information about our processes in easy English and 21 community languages, including Auslan. We tweet and now have over 10,000 Twitter followers. We blog, we crowdsource with wikis. We're pioneers among government agencies in using EPUBs. And this year, we were selected as a finalist in the Excellence in E-Government Awards. Not bad for a small agency. For my own part, I feel privileged to lead such a wonderful and enduring body. I have been president since December 2009, and I look forward to adding my own mille fleurs to the ALRC's continuing rich history. <laughs> <laughs>